Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. And again, another prophetic segment, another alarming news here, another biblical prophecy being fulfilled even as we speak. Now we're starting to see Micah chapter 4 coming to view exactly what I said would actually take place. Uh, it's kind of interesting the way this is unraveling, and I thank Sister Shoshana for uh, sharing this particular news clip with me. She is in Israel right now. We are in Eastern Europe at the time, being in Israel for too long. Uh, but uh, this is on Israel Today. Uh, the article states here, Netanyahu coalition in trouble over evacuation of Jews. Now this is also, by the way, on Israel National News, one of the sources I use quite frequently. The article here states, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's fragile coalition looked to be in trouble Tuesday morning after, our, after police forcibly removed residents from a newly constructed neighborhood in the Jewish town of Beit El, north of Jerusalem. Uh, that's not too far from where I used to live myself there uh, near French Hill. Uh, it says, Israel's Supreme Court recently ordered the houses in the new uh, Drenoff neighborhood of Beit El, uh, be demolished following a left-wing petition claiming the structures were built on Palestinian land. What a disgrace to even hear this type of news coming out whatsoever. Uh, as I said, you would see uh, uh, in, in different parts of Jerusalem, the Jews would be evicted, even as Gulio Miotti reported on Israel National News that they're going to evict the Jews from Jerusalem. And now we're starting to see this very thing happen. We'll go to the scripture here in just a moment, but let me continue to share these things with you here. According to the article, it says on Monday, in the third paragraph here, on Monday, so-called Jewish settlers barricaded themselves in the houses to prevent the order being carried out. In the early morning hours on Tuesdays, hundreds of riot police showed up to evacuate the neighborhood. Some 50 demonstrators were arrested during the ensuing confrontation. Um, it says the entire episode enraged right-wing members of Netanyahu's coalition who wondered why the police had been given a green light for the evacuation when both the Prime Minister and his Defense Minister, Moshe Yalan, claimed to be against the demolition of the Dranoff neighborhood. Again, who controls the shots that are going on in Israel? Undoubtedly, we have to ask the question that the scripture is going to ask you as well. Uh, and let me just, let's go, let's go immediately to the book of Micah. Again, a prophetic segment of the news. This is, um, and I apologize too that we have been a little bit delayed in getting our live stream back up and running. It'll be next week before we do after uh, the computer that we got back uh, after TSA's inspection there was damaged. Uh, so we have not been able to get the live stream up running properly. Plus, we're redoing the, the layout here in our little film studio. So uh, hopefully by the first week, we'll get that taken care of. Micah chapter 4. Let's go directly to this. We already know this is the prophecy, especially around verse 6, that God has promised that he would return Israel to their homeland, the Jewish people back to their homeland, specifically to Mount Zion, which is in Jerusalem, and he would be there forevermore with them. But then the story changes, and God begins to ask, ask Israel, why are you in travail? Why are you uh, in this great pain that you're going through? And that's just paraphrasing it. But let's look right at the scripture here. And that's in verse 9. He says, Now why doest thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Now this is exactly, you're seeing this passage fulfilled right before your eyes. Just like we said yesterday in the news broadcast there. And I apologize for the clicking noise that's been in the videos. We're trying to resolve it. We're running two cameras now to see if it's in the cameras or whether or not it might be in the, uh, in the, in the, in the software. Uh, but anyway, bear with me on this. But let me just remind you again, just the other day, the Temple Mount on, on the 26th of July has announced that they started the plans of drawing the third temple. The blueprints are being drawn, drawn up. Now, uh, we saw this, we shared that with you. This is Revelation chapter 11, verse 1, especially for my Jewish brethren who are not aware of many things that are in the Christian Bible. Uh, you can look at that, Revelation 11, chapter 1. He's given a read, likened to a rod. That rod is a measuring rod. As we see in the scripture, he was to measure the temple, measure the altar, leave out the outer court. The outer court is given to the Gentiles. And they will tread what? The holy city underfoot 40 and 2 months. These so-called Palestinians are not 
uh, Palestinians. This land belongs to Israel. God promised that we would return home. The British mandate of 1914 gave Israel all of that land there. That then was the former, that was the League of Nations that was already voted a clear mandate for a Jewish state. But because why? You didn't like what the Jews did when they came home, so you decided to take it from them and give it and make up this Arabic group called Palestinians. They're not Palestinians. They're Arab people that need Yeshua. I will agree with that. They need Yeshua is what they need but they're not Palestinians the Jewish people this is the home that God gave us but he said we would be in travail as a woman in travail daughter of Zion as he calls us okay so now he says to the question in verse 9 is there no king in thee Benjamin Netanyahu was anointed prime minister by Mike Evans and was prophesied over before he ever became a prime minister that he would be prime minister of Israel not once but twice anytime a man is anointed to be a ruler of Israel it makes him a king that is the biblical mandate that was given and of course what happened God knew that we did that, that, that we didn't need a king he had Samuel the prophet but Israel went wrong how did Israel go wrong because she wanted a king to rule over like the nations had not the way God had intended to rule over them they got a king but it wasn't God's provided way for them and so God condemned it you see he allowed it it was a permissive will he permitted them to have it Samuel being all upset he says Lord he says they rejected me and God said to Samuel they didn't reject you Samuel they rejected me from ruling over them and that's exactly what happened and so therefore God allowed a king we got a David we got a Solomon but we finally got an Ahab and what did Ahab do Ahab invited Jezebel married her and brought idolatry Babylonian idolatry into Israel the same thing that Shimon Perez did in 1993 he married Jezebel the Roman Catholic Church the Babylonian Empire and brought them into Israel and you wonder my Jewish brothers and sisters in Israel why we you are being thrown out of these different parts of the land it is because it is prophesied that this would happen so my Jewish brothers in Israel and, and I got an email just I just read it tonight let me just share this with you a, a precious brother wrote me and he asked me he says why do you separate the Christian brethren from the Jewish brethren and and so I wrote the brother back to, to help him to understand. When I speak of my Jewish brethren, I'm talking about those Jews that have not recognized Yeshua to be the Mashiach. You see, that yes, Yeshua opened that door and paved the way for us to be one, but they've not recognized as of yet. So therefore, I address them as my Jewish brethren until they can see Mashiach. Then we become full-fledged brothers. So this is the reason why I do this. Now, Let's look at the scripture on this. He says, now why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? Of course, he perished. He perished 2,000 years ago. Yeshua is the counselor, the prince of peace, the mighty God, the everlasting father, El Gibor. Okay, see, that's who he is. And so he was the counselor and he perished 2,000 years ago. So God is asking that question. This for pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. Be in pain and in, in labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city. What city? The city of Jerusalem. What is the article saying? They're, they're de demolishing houses in northern Jerusalem in a little neighborhood called, uh, what was it again? Let's look at that neighborhood here. Oh, this is so interesting. Bethel. Bait the house of God and you're throwing them out. And Prime Minister Netanyahu that says the article says that he claims that him and Moshe Yalan was against it. Then who in the world is controlling the police in Jerusalem then? Kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? And that you're looking to your king, Benjamin Netanyahu, and he cannot deliver you. You need to look and cry out to Hashem to send forth Eliyahu be Gam Moshe Hanavim. Then God can deliver Israel. The prophecies are being fulfilled before your eyes and you don't even recognize it. Remember David when he was across the river Jordan there. He had two men there that he sent back to Israel and he sent them to Jerusalem. He says, and when you get the people in one mind, in one accord, then I can come home. There's your two witnesses prophesied in the story of David after Absalom, his father, had rejected him. Now, he says here, you shall dwell in the field and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. See, you got to go to Babylon. You got to go to Rome because Rome set the mess up. So now you're going to have to deal with it. 
God will send his two witnesses on the scene. And I get all kinds of emails about everybody in the world claiming to be Elijah or Moses or everything else, you know. Believe me, when the two witnesses come on the scene, they don't need no announcement. They won't need no, there will be no fanfare for them to be, to be made known. They will not have to come out and say, bless God, I'm one of the two witnesses. Believe me, they will come with the signs and wonders of Almighty God that will shake a world, that will cause a world to hate them. Then you'll know who they are. And they won't be coming by themselves. They'll be coming together. My Jewish brethren, if you will begin to seek God, ask him. You've held the door open every Pesach for Eliyahu. Rashi said to you, according to the prophecy that was written in Exodus 15, that it was prophetic that Moses, when he sang the song, the song of redemption, that it would be sung in the future and he would be the one to sing it. No doubt he comes back to sing it then, doesn't he? Oh my gosh. All right, friends, let's, let's look at this article, the rest of it here. For his part, Netanyahu maintained that he was working to strengthen the Jewish communities of Judea and Samaria, but that it must be done in accordance with the law and approval of the courts. Oh my gosh. Then the king is not doing us any good, is he? You know, Prime Minister Netanyahu, my brother, I feel for you the pressure that you're under, and yet prophecy written about you here. I believe, though, that you got a good heart. I believe that you want to do the right thing. Or could it be the other way around? Only God knows that. But there is time for you to repent, just like it is for Shimon Perez. He's up in age now. The hour is soon that God will call him home to give account for the deals that he made with Jezebel. Former President Perez, might I say this to you, my brother? Your father Ahab, years ago, repented in sackcloth and ashes for the evils that he brought upon Israel. And God so much had compassion because God is not a God He's a God of mercy. Let me put it that way. And even Ahab, he said he would not bring upon him the judgments that he had planned, but he'd bring it upon his son. You have become that spiritual son. I trust Prime Minister or former Prime Minister and former President of Israel, Shimon Peres, that you will repent while there's time to repent. Says here, Education Minister Naftali Bennett, whose Jewish home faction is the champion of the settler cause, hinted that his party would stop cooperating with Netanyahu and might leave the government altogether if the Prime Minister did not make right this situation. I, I, I respect that, Mr. Bennett, but I know you were part of a bill that would make yourself leave the government anyway. This is so sad, so alarming. And again, what can I say? Prophecy is being fulfilled before your eyes. Right before your eyes. Will anybody wake up to it? Prime Minister Netanyahu, may I ask you this, my brother? Did you make a deal with the Vatican has there been a deal signed that is going to allow the building of a third temple that is still yet to be announced? You've already allowed the internationalizing of the city. Of course, that may not have been you. It could have been Perez that got that role, rolling to start with, with all the things that he did back in 93 on forward with the Catholic Church. You know, 2,000 years ago, the Jews wanted to be delivered from the hands of the Romans. You know, Yeshua is going to come back and finish that job because you brought the Romans right back into Israel. Oh, they're hiding behind the Palestinian people. And you Palestinians, let me just say this to you. You have been so fooled, so fooled by this ungodly coalition with Rome, it's not even funny. You have become the, the, you've become the puppet, and your puppet master is none other than, uh, than Pope Francis. And let me just share with you what God wrote in here about your people. In Ezekiel 35, God first says that he's going to make Mount Seir desolate. 
That's in verse 7 of chapter 35 of Ezekiel's prophecy. He says, I will fill his mountains with his slain men. Mm. Let's go to verse 9. I will make thee a perpetual desolations, and thy city shall not return, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine. We will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. The Holy of Holies on the Temple Mount, the Lord dwelt in the Holy of Holies at one time. And you have claimed to make this city your own. And you call it two nations. The prophecy has already showed how that you would divide the land and it's given to the Mount Seir, uh, which is Edom, by the way. It does bring this out that it's Edom later. Esau's descendants, as I've brought out in many other videos, you can, see the, you can see the trail. Obadiah clearly identifies Esau as the Romans. Look it up and read it. My Jewish brethren, you need to see it because your prophecies are being fulfilled faster than you can even think. And yet your mind is somewhere else. It's not on your knees before God Almighty. You know, instead of going to all the different handwritten prayers, let's get before God and seek Him with true, honest prayers. And I know you know how to pray like that. You're a praying people. You've always been a praying people. But we've got to seek God because the Romans are here again. Whereas the Lord was there. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them, and I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. That's coming very soon. When does God judge you, Rome? Vatican City. Your judgment will begin with the two witnesses that are about to arrive on the scene in Israel and will bring down judgments upon Rome for all the evils that they have done. You will see like the days of Pharaoh because Moses says, I will sing unto the Lord that he's gotten victory over the horse and over his rider. That Antichrist spirit, you're coming down. And they're the two that can do it. They will come with signs and wonders and you will see as it was in the times of Egypt as you have made yourself, Mr. Francis, the Pharaoh, the God on earth to the people. I know good and well that your very little famous words on your Vatican crown, Vicar, uh, excuse me, uh, Vicarious Filia Dilia, which is the Vicar of Christ, a substitute for Christ, is the Latin translation for the word Antichristo. You have exposed yourself in your own doings in making a world government that you intend to be the head of. And recently on one of the Catholic websites, it actually says in there, speaking of the United Nations, there's no, pre no world president. And then they put in a nice exclamation point, as of yet, they know you plan to be that president, the world leader. You will be exposed. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live with yet another astonishing prophetic segment of the news. Shalom.